Greetings, Brewers, and welcome to Imperial Yeast Educational Series. In this video, we will be discussing the process of counting yeast cells and determining their viability for your fermentation. Determining the number and viability of your yeast cells is an important process to achieving the proper pitch rate to produce consistency with fermentation times, attenuation, and flavor and aroma profiles. Evaluating yeast viability is also important to understanding if potential fermentation issues are caused by the yeast or another factor. To perform a cell count, you will need a microscope, a hemocytometer, test tubes with a rack, one milliliter auto pipetter, one milliliter blue pipette tips, a 10 milliliter pipette pump, 10 milliliter serological pipettes, Kim wipes, a 500 milliliter beaker, a hand tally, methylene blue at 0.01%, a scale, and a 500 milliliter wide mouth jar with cap. Now let's get counting. The first thing you'll do is pull a yeast sample for the count. Be sure to use the aseptic technique to harvest the sample from your brink into a container that will allow you to mix the slurry. Use a clean container with a screw on cap, filling it about half full. You only need about 200 to 300 grams or milliliters. Next, you will have to dilute the yeast prior to counting. A typical dilution is anywhere from 200 to 1,000 times. These dilutions can be done by weight with a scale or by volume with pipettes. Most of the time, it will be a combination of both. It is important to make these dilutions as accurate as possible. Any significant variation will create errors in the final pitch rate of yeast in your fermentation. There are a couple things to keep in mind before making your dilutions the type of water used, and good technique using the pipettes. Use a phosphate buffer solution or tap water when creating these dilutions. Avoid using distilled water. Using proper techniques with the pipettes will prevent carryover liquid from the outside of the pipette to the sample. Hold the pipette upright and place the tip into the slurry. Put it in far enough to get a sample and don't go too far. Sample slowly, wiping any excess material on the outside of the pipette onto the sides of the source container. When dispensing, go straight in without touching the walls of the delivery container, making sure to expel all the material from the pipette. Here are the steps to make a 1 to 1,000 dilution. First, take a 500 milliliter beaker and tear it on the scale. Next, add five grams of yeast to the beaker. Then, add 245 grams of water to the beaker. You have now created a 1 to 50 dilution. Grab a test tube for the next step. Add nine milliliters of water to a clean test tube. Make sure you are measuring from the bottom of the meniscus when using a pipette. You can double check you have the correct amount by weighing the expelled material. One milliliter equals one gram, so nine milliliters of water will weigh nine grams. Then add one milliliter of the one to 50 dilution to the tube. You have now created a one to 500 dilution. Next, add two milliliters of the one to 500 dilution to a clean test tube. Finally, add two milliliters of the methylene blue to the test tube with a one to 500 dilution. You have now created a one to 1,000 dilution. It is time to use your hemocytometer to count cells. The hemocytometer has a five by five grid for a total of 25 squares. This counting area holds one 10,000th of a milliliter. You will be counting the cells in all 25 squares. Sometimes we will count five squares, the four corners and the center square. You can do this to save time by making the assumption that the sample is representative of the whole grid. You will count the cells touching the top and the left lines, not the bottom and right lines. First, clean the hemocytometer and cover slip with isopropyl and a Kim wipe before loading the sample. Next, add a cover slip to the slide. Then, pull your sample of your final 1 to 1,000 dilution into a pipette. Place the end of the pipette in the hemocytometer's loading area and add liquid until it just reaches the edges of the holding area, avoiding adding too much or too little. Next, place the slide on the microscope. Use the 40X objective and turn the focus knob until the objective is almost touching the cover slip. Use the fine focus knob to pull the lens away from the slide until the grid and the yeast come into focus. Once in focus, count all of the cells in the 25 square grid using a hand tally. Count all cells, including the buds, as long as they are at least 50% of the size of the parent cell. Separately, count the dead cells with another tally. Non-viable cells will stain blue, 
live cells will be clear. There will often be cells that are stained lighter blue, and deciding where to draw the line between stained and clear is up to you. The important thing is to stay consistent with how you choose to identify them in your brewery. Repeat the count starting on the other side of the hemocytometer. Both counts should be within 10% of each other. If not, clean and reload the hemocytometer and perform another count. Clean and dry the hemocytometer immediately after use. Do not put it away wet. Record your results by entering your dilution and hemocytometer counts along with your expected work volume and target pitch rate into a repitching calculator. You're now ready to repitch your yeast. You can learn more by following the link to our video on harvesting and repitching provided in the description. Happy brewing.